Lord, let me tell y'all, this is too much. This is just too much for me. It is 2 a.m. Fantasia just dropped the definition of, oh, I listened to the whole thing some once and twice and three times. And I just want to talk about it. I'm going to do a quick review. It's going to be pretty quick, but I don't know. It ain't going to be too quick But because I, I got a lot of notes. So I'm just going to read my notes. But let me tell you, to start out, I am loving the feel of it. I am loving the, the mix of music. But it wasn't as different as I thought it was going to be. I thought she was going to be like just jumping from thing to thing, the different genre to genre. And it's not. It's got pretty much a through line with one or two or three little songs here and there that are not exactly R&B. But it all works very well. And I'm going to get right into it. Number one is crazy. And this starts with a totally different sound that we've heard from Fantasia. The driving beat and kind of a pop rock infused instrumentation. Her vocals are light and airy, but she still has a depth in her interpretation that makes it believable. This is a deceptively intricate track, also very well produced. Number two, No Time For It. I think I did a reaction video to this when the song came out, so you know, you can check that out on my Robert Anton Vlogs channel. I love the R&B feel and Fantasia's signature vocal and the message of the song. This is a bop and always has me rocking from side to side and singing along to the chorus. No time for. Make sure you also check out her acoustic version of this. It's on YouTube if you haven't seen it already. Number three, So Blue. More mid tempo RB from Fantasia, but again with a lighter vocal than I'd expect. Her vocals are so percussive on this track, and I like how she's the one who did wrong in the storyline. She's not talking about somebody else did wrong, she's the one who did wrong. Really nice, like, change around. And I love the background vocals and another great live band feel on the track. Number four, When I Met You. This is a great change of pace as it starts out. Fantasia gives us a nice little emotion and tenderness. When the snaps come in, the mood has been well set for love. And we get a beautiful surprise as the track progresses. Really loving the instrumentation on all of the songs so far. And this has an old school feel that reminds me of like the old baby making music. Music era kind of also reminded me of Natalie Cole. I, I don't know. It just she just came to mind while I heard her singing this. Number five, sleeping with the one I love. Oh my god! I saw Fantasia this past spring at Madison Square Garden right here in New York City, and she closed out the concert with this song. Oh, and I was immediately in love. She wailed away on it. I had to go home, look up the song on YouTube, download it and listen to it over and over and over. I even sang some of it. I was I was like lost sleeping. <laughs> with the one I love. Oh, I love this song so much. Okay, I've heard it a lot already. So let me tell you, what did I write though? This is an old school blues feel that she says was inspired by Otis Redding and James Brown. Love her sweet delivery on the track, but she wailed away on it at the concert. And that's the Vantage I fell in love with. But I like this. She touches on some of it on the album cut, but it's very tame comparably. So if you like this one, go check out that one. Because if you like what she's walls and whales and all it, you are absolutely going to love the other one. But this is very nice also. Number six, Stay Up featuring Stacey Barth. And we get more of an electronic beat for this tune and an imploring tone from Fantasia. Her voice is so soothing on this as she encourages us to keep going no matter what's going down. Stacey Barth also has a pleasing tone with some interesting overtones. And I like when she flips in and out of her raspy falsetto. It sounds like there's a third male maybe voice on the track I don't know this one is ripe for remixes for the clubs and lounges and I cannot wait to hear it out of the club and be like oh yeah baby please make sure to thumb this up and let me know that you are enjoying it also pass it around to your friends and other people that you know if you're in a Fantasia group or something like that also let me know what your favorite tracks are down in the comments all right thanks a lot thanks for your thumbs number seven ugly you could have bowled me over when I heard Fantasia doing a country song but she does a wonderful job of mixing her own soul into the story. And I'll admit, it took me a half dozen plays for it to grow on me, but now I absolutely love it. And it's a sad story with an uplifting ending, and Tasia really pours herself into it. Like she does everything, just pours on the emotion and the 
feeling and you can really visualize what she's talking about and what she's singing about. She always has a way of just making it personal and touching. Next number eight is Wait For You and Fantasia starts this out waking somebody up to tell him on the phone that she loves him and she misses him and asks him to wait for her and all that. And I was just waiting for the music to start. And it really did. It started with her vocals and sparse background noise, another nice mid-tempo groove with a bouncy feel and perfect vocal delivery. Number nine, Roller Coasters featuring Aloe Black. And I was smiling from ear to ear from the quick cannon in the beginning of this with just Fantasia's voice over and over again. And then Aloe Black came in with a smooth and gritty sound. The quick switch back to Tasia telling you a story was a very nice surprise. Some of these I've heard over the last few months, you know, because she released four or five songs already but on first listen this is my favorite song so far mainly because of the round and round canon and something about how Fantasia tells the story. Aloe Black rap sings on this and the bridge and then we get a nice modulation and this really takes you on a musical journey really really good. Number 10 is Lonely Legend and I think Fantasia was channeling like Tina Turner as she started this out and her voice is really way down in the mud but she sounded more like herself in the chorus. This has a nice driving beat and brought us back to the rock part of the rock so I was liking the feel in the verses but was wondering if it was another voice of another person singing sometime that horn section though oh was killing it oh my god I was like you better work number 11 the final track on the album I made it featuring Ty Tibbet and I heard this a few days ago on Good Morning America I think it was and again I had to listen to it over and over and over and again I'm so glad that Fantasia like closed this out getting back to her gospel roots and this is pure contemporary gospel so uplifting it left me with a wonderful afterglow listening at the end of the album again those horns were slaying the scene and oh just the on this whole album just the instrumentation the the arrangements the vocals it's very light and airy and, and it's Fantasia but it's kind of like a streamlined version of Fantasia and uh, it, I, I, I I am totally enjoying it. I'm liking the feel. It's something you can listen to over and over and over again. And believe me, I will. I'm going to be picking up my hard copy and I will go to Instagram and post it for you guys when I get it. But I got to get it tomorrow. I'll get it this weekend. <sighs> Tell me what you thought down in the comments. I am in love with so many of these songs. Thank you, Fantasia, for this definition of you letting us know who you are. Rock soul, baby. I am absolutely loving it. I'm out. This is Robert Anton, RobertAnton.com.